the fact that there's been no transparency here is what makes a lot of us say, well, what the hell happened? You can declassify the assassination attempt files. You could clear things up like that. You'll do that, right? I would, yeah, sure. I mean, there's nothing, there should be nothing to hide here. It's his decision. I yeah. think, frankly, <laughs> yeah. But- Yesterday, Donald Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance, appeared on Fox News Channel with Jesse Waters. And much of the conversation, obviously, naturally, revolved around the recent assassination attempt on President Trump's life. In fact, why isn't that still the number one most important story anyone is following right now? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Anyway, here's Donald Trump talking about some of the issues that he still is grappling with having to do with the lack of full Secret Service protection that he should have had. Screw-ups sometimes happen, even very big screw-ups, but it's the responsibility of leaders to stand before the country and say, all right, we screwed up. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to answer questions and do it in public. I think that the fact that there's been no transparency here is what makes a lot of us say, well, what the hell happened and why, you know, are we actually making taking steps to ensure it doesn't happen again? If you're elected, You can declassify the assassination attempt files. You could clear things up like that. You'll do that, right? I would, yeah, sure. There's nothing, there should be nothing to hide here. It's his decision. I think, frankly, (laughs) yeah, but but I think, frankly, many things are known right now. But some of the things that are known are bad. How did somebody get on that roof? And why wasn't he reported? Because people saw that he was on the roof. And you had uh, Trumpers screaming the woman in the red in the red shirt, she was screaming, there's a man on the roof. And then other people said, there's a man on the roof who's got a gun. And that was quite a bit before I walked onto the stage. So you would have thought somebody would have done something about it. Yeah, you would think. And uh, this is a whole promise to declassify things, as you just heard from President Trump there. Uh, there's no reason why it should be declassified. But let's face it. We're what? 61 years after the Kennedy assassination in Dallas, and they still haven't fully declassified everything there? I mean, who who exactly are they protecting at this point? Actually, I didn't mean that as some sort of rhetorical question. Seriously, who are they protecting at this point? 61 years later. So uh, maybe we could roll out and declassify all the Secret Service data and FBI data and CIA data and any other alphabet soup agency involved in both of these extraordinary moments in American history. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, But that last question there is something that still remains unanswered, even after hours and hours of testimony yesterday from the Secret Service director, who's just recently resigned her position earlier today, but that doesn't mean she's out of the woods, I assure you. Uh, One question has to be answered. Police officers were notified, and they physically saw a man crawling in a sniper position with a long gun on a roof at a sniper shot position with a direct line of fire to President Trump's speaking position before President Trump came out at that rally. At that moment, when police officers radioed, and we know they don't sit on the same encrypted frequencies as Secret Service, but there is supposed to be a communications relay at their command center where local authorities hear something like that from a cop and they directly tell the Secret Service and they still haven't answered what went wrong there. That's one of the first and only questions that should be answered right now. And they're claiming 10 days later that they still don't have that answer. I'm not the kind of guy that jumps onto a conspiracy theory. But unless you're transparent and open with a basic fundamental data point like that, 10 days later, if you can't reveal that answer, it sure looks like you're covering something up. And then one must ask, what are you covering up? There's only two answers. You're either covering up your incompetency that you didn't actually have local law enforcement in the command center with Secret Service to be able to trade communications back and forth. So you're covering that incompetency up, or you're covering up the fact that you did know about it and did nothing. Either way, we, the American people, deserve to know. 
That's why we pay for the Secret Service. We do pay for them. It's our money. That's why we deserve to know what you're doing with it, especially when you're screwing up on the one job you've got. All right, a little bit more here from this extraordinary exchange last night about the questions that Donald Trump, the man who took a bullet in the ear because of this behavior, uh, the questions he still got. Mistakes were made. They were monitoring this guy for an hour beforehand. No one told you not to take the stage? No, nobody mentioned it. Nobody said there was a problem. And I would have waited for 15. They could have said, let's wait for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, five minutes, something. Uh, nobody said, I think that was a mistake. Uh, the uh, the Secret Service, they call them snipers, but he was, you know, world-class shot. Uh, I guess he didn't want to take the shot. I can understand that one a little bit because maybe he didn't see, you know, maybe he doesn't know. You don't want to shoot somebody if the person's not not going to be carrying a gun. I don't know if they had a gun. Um, they had a policeman that actually saw the man with a gun, and you would have thought that uh, that would have been conveyed to other people. So there were some there were some mistakes. But I can tell you this, uh, just to go on the more positive side, the people on the stage were unbelievable and brave. The, they were all Secret Service that came running up, and they were running past bullets. Bullets were, when I went down, bullets were coming over my head, and you hear them. It's like a zip, zip. Uh, so I'm lucky I went down fast. But I don't even consider that the lucky part. I consider the lucky part turning exactly right in the one position where, you know, you're going to get hit here, but you're not going to get hit in the wrong location, which is, you know what that is. Uh, Yeah, I'll say it is. And yeah, that's lucky. Lucky is one word for it. Uh, But again, the questions, the questions, the questions. And it's interesting that Jesse Waters began that exchange there with mistakes were made. Yeah, that's... uh, uh, a pretty generous description of what's going on. But here's the problem. We have no evidence right now to say one way or the other, whether these were mistakes or whether they were deliberate. I'm not saying they're one or the other, but it's irresponsible to just decide it is one or the other. If these were mistakes, then yesterday would have been a great opportunity for the secret service director, Kim Cheadle to say these were mistakes. This is what we should have done. This is what we did instead. This is why we did it instead. And that's how the mistakes were made. But she didn't provide that. And when you don't provide it, 10 days after the fact, on basic fundamental questions about what went wrong, then you'll forgive us for leaving all options open and on the table. In fact, it would be irresponsible to not leave all options open and on the table. I personally don't want to wait 40 years for Oliver Stone to make a movie about this. Do you? Senator, the FBI is doing an investigation on the assassination attempt. Do you trust the Bureau? I don't trust the Bureau leadership, but I certainly think there are a lot of good field agents, guys on the grounds who have the country's best interest at heart. I think like the president, obviously he was there and I wasn't, but my initial reaction was exactly the same. What bravery from the guys who reacted immediately, but what the hell was going on? How was that guy ever allowed to be there in the first place? I think somebody, whether it's higher up or, or somebody else involved really did screw up and we have to get to the bottom of it because, you know, now me and my family are under protection. And uh, obviously the president's safety is of paramount importance. I mean, do people realize whether you're Democrat or Republican, what an unbelievable you know, bullet that we all dodged, right? Of course, the president's life is, is the most important thing. The unrest in this country, the anger, it would have taken this country a half a century to get over it. And um, you know, we, we really did, I think as a country, get really lucky, not just the president. I know many people in the FBI, they're great. They tend to be at the mid and lower levels, they're up and they're, right. they're MAGA. Believe me, they're MAGA. They make America great again, people. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's some things going on with our government that we have to really worry about. Uh, did we have enough people? Why didn't we have enough people? Somebody said that a lot of people were put on Biden's uh, detail. The problem is Biden doesn't draw anybody. He draws flies. He draws nobody. And... You know, you don't need very many people for that because he does not draw up. 30 people show up and we have 55, 60,000 people show up. And so you have to take care of those big crowds. Uh, Secret Service detail of 20, you can have a one to one ratio at a Biden rally. Right. The president actually needs substantial protection. So I I, I 100 percent believe that some people got to be 
investigated and probably some people need to be fired. Senator, yeah. the of course, um, this was recorded last night. Uh, and the breaking developing story here is that as of this morning, just about an hour before we started this stream, uh, Kimberly Chittle did step down. She resigned. Nobody gets fired, though. It's amazing. Well, what exactly does it take to get fired in the Biden administration? The Afghanistan pull up? Nobody gets fired. The inflation, the economy, nobody gets fired. The, the constant train derailments and chemical spills, nobody gets fired. The border, nobody gets fired. Crime, nobody gets fired. It's discovered that the FBI is investigating uh, men who go to traditional Latin mass and going after parents who go to school board meetings, nobody gets fired. Fauci and the masks and the vaccines and the mandates and the Wuhan lab leak, nobody gets fired. And now this, nobody gets fired. It's funny. It seems as though the only person, the only incompetent, the only complete bumbling dolt from the Biden administration who has finally been fired is Joe Biden. Yeah, Kimberly Cheadle has stepped down. But Donald Trump still has a lot of questions about this would-be assassin, and he wants answers to all of them. He lays it out here in this segment. Are you at all suspicious he had help? Well, you just don't know. He doesn't, it doesn't look like it, does it? But now we're finding out that he had some encrypted phone numbers and to foreign countries, which a little bit surprises me. When you look at him, uh, he was somebody that was bullied in school. And, you know, you, you hear all different stories. I would say probably he was a loner, but you don't know that. They have to check out the phone numbers. They have to check out the phone. I think they were able to break into his phone. I think, I hope, I would hope so. For, for, for a, a crime like this, you have to be able to break into a phone, <laughs> you know because they pride themselves on not allowing people to break in and government can't get in. Apple can let you in. So I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, assassination is big stuff and you have to get to it. So we'll see what happens. But uh, it just shouldn't have been when you have a, a, a essentially a flat open roof like that and it's direct to the target with absolutely nothing in its way. How can somebody be up there? And he was up there for a long period of time because they have tape of him moving all over the place. And then they see him and they don't report him. Who was the who was the policeman or the I guess it was local police who looked at him, saw him standing with a gun? I think the guy saw him and this guy dropped off the roof. And I don't blame him for that. What I do blame him for is, is why is he calling everybody screaming and say there's a guy with a gun up there? What did the what did he do when he dropped off the roof? Did he just go away and say like nothing? That's a big, you know, that's a big factor. Who was he? And why did he do that? Why didn't we know about that? Because I would have, you know, oftentimes based on weather and based on other things, it'd say, Sir, would you wait 10 minutes before you go out, please? We never had a case like this. But certainly if they said, Would you wait five, 10, 15, 20 minutes because we have a possible problem, unlikely but possible. Uh, I wish somebody would have done that because uh, Corey would be alive and two people that were seriously hurt would not be hurt. That's right. Uh, listen, President Trump is asking all the right questions. He demands answers. They're not going to be forthcoming. Uh, and quite frankly, quite possibly, only his election actually bring those answers to the table. But at least he's asking the same questions we're all asking. And once he gets into the White House, he can actually act on behalf of the American people and get to those answers. And it's not just about President Trump. It's about what the Secret Service is supposed to do. Uh, the question to J.D. Vance earlier from Jesse Waters is, do you trust the FBI to conduct this investigation? And they say, yeah, listen, the guys on the ground are great. They're MAGA. We've met them. They love this country. They're patriots. It's the leadership that we have issues with and them worry about. And, you know, you hear from all these these intellectual ethical and moral superiors of us conservatives, us, you know, rabble down here, the hoi polloi, uh, they tell us all the time that you must trust our institutions, trust the credentialed class, trust the experts. 
Well, let me rattle them off again from the DOJ to the FBI to the CIA to the NIH to the HHS to the USSS to whatever other alphabet soup agency you want to put out there that's responsible for protecting our borders, keeping our streets safe, uh, utilizing the law to go after actual criminals and not using the law as a political weapon against your political opponents. They have failed at every turn. These institutions that, yes, at one point had a pristine reputation and we did have faith that they had the best interest of our Constitution and the American people at heart, they have allowed themselves to be tarnished and warped and distorted and twisted into nothing more than political weapons for the deep state, for the bureaucracy, for the infrastructure. This is not about institutions. Forgive us for not trusting the institutions, but they haven't done much to earn our trust. And when all is said and done, when people are elected into office, they raise their right hand, they put their hand on their holy book, and they swear to protect and defend the Constitution, not the institutions. And that's what we need right now more than ever. The Constitution getting elevated up over these rotting institutions. One other observation quickly in this interview, do you notice how much more comfortable at ease Donald Trump seems on camera with J.D. Vance? Uh, Their body language, the way they interact, the conversation. I, I think he and Pence figured things out and they had a working relationship for a while there in the White House, but they were always very different types of people with very different worldviews and perspectives and approaches. I think that's clear. These two, at least from Trump's perspective, he seems very at ease. He seems very comfortable with his new running mate. It'll be interesting to watch their relationship develop over the next few months and hopefully over the next few years. 